Now we move on to the second stage where we'll prove that this collection is in fact sigma algebra. And this statement actually is like this. We have to show that if I have a sequence of elements in my collection of all measurable sets, then I can show that the disjoint union of the sequence, which I will call A, is also measurable. So this is again objective of our proof. Correction. The union, of course, should not necessarily be disjoint. It's just a typo on a slide. Nowhere in the, in the proof which will follow, we will use the fact that the union is disjoint. Again, we'll follow the definition. We'll fix an epsilon, positive epsilon. Uh, for each individual a n, because it comes from the measurable algebra, now I can refer to this the, as the algebra of the big measurable subsets, I can say that there is an element of the minimal enveloping ring with the property that the symmetric difference, like so, is controlled by this number. It's a positive number. Now, I would like to prove a little statement which is within the scope of this part and which says that this collection we constructed, this sequence of elements of R of S, is in fact such that if you add up individually the measures of them, and because they are coming from R, you see the, what kind of symbol I use, it's not the external measure, it's, this is in fact the original measure. Uh, Although, of course, earlier, we, when we talk about the measures here, measure on this minimal enveloping ring, we were talking about this extension and tilde. But in this notation here, I just silently identify the extension with the original measure. So, I want to prove this smaller statement within the scope of this larger statement that f is a sigma algebra. The statement goes like this, that this collection of a dash n's which is constructed, basing on the fact that the an came from the measurable algebra. If you sum their measures, till the measures, or the original measures, individually, this sum will deliver a finite number, or numeric, uh, uh, using the language of the numerical series, this sum converges. Look how we're going to show this. Um, first, I'll make this observation. Again, it's the relation between subsets, something relatively easy to check, and I'll leave it for you to check, that A dash is a subset of this union. Now if I use the fact that the... <coughs> in fact, before I do that, actually now I can, I can take the union of this embeddings individual, and then I'll have the left-hand side, union of the left-hand side. It's a subset of the union of the right-hand side. And that's what I have there. The union of these elements is just A, and the union of these symmetric differences is here. Now what I will do is this. Look at this. I'll take the measure. I'll take the measure, original measure, of this left-hand side, but not complete left-hand side, but partial union of this left-hand side. Here it is. Because the partial union obviously is smaller than the complete union, it, all of this will be sitting within this larger set. Uh, on this partial union, because the partial union is a finite union, this whole element, which is underlined here, will be a subset of your minimal enveloping ring. On this minimal enveloping ring, my measure, tilde measure, which I identify in notation with my original measure, coincides with the external measure, something we established with you in the earlier comments, and yes, and you remember the principal part in this in showing this was the fact that the original measure was sigma additive. That's the place where we use this thing. So I replace my measure with the external measure. The external measure in its turn has the semi-additivity property, so I can use the semi-additivity and replace it like this. External measure of this individual set, and external measure of all of these symmetric differences. And then this one I keep. This one adds up to epsilon because this is just a geometric progression. In particular, this is a measure. It is additive function, so in fact I can now replace it with the sum of the individual measures. And I can keep the right-hand side. And that's what I have. And this is the finite number. Remember, that's another thing which we established with you because my x, my universal set, was the element of the 
is assumed to be the element of the minimal enveloping ring, external measure always deliver a finite number. So this is a finite number, and that is true for every n. Uniformly, there's no any dependence on n here. This is something from the numerical series analysis, right? If you can show that the partial sum of a numerical series is uniformly bounded, so this series now, we established it. I guess I'll just disagree it all the same. This series, we just established it, it is a converging series. Now, I'd like to have another result from the numerical series analysis, which is like a description of the converging series in terms of the epsilons and the tail of a series. And it says something like this. If I now choose this epsilon, positive epsilon, for this converging series, I can produce a special number which may depend on epsilon, and I'll just reflect this dependence here clearly, such that if I, took t if I take the tail of my series, so yeah, if I take the series, which starts from this number n, and the epsilon here is missing, I'll put it in in a sec. If I took, if I take this tail, which starts after this particular index, this tail will be less than epsilon. Again, for this epsilon, I found a place after which the sum, the tail of my series, is less than epsilon. This, is, this came from the fact, which we just established, that this is a converging series. Now we're ready to do a demonstration that this union will be, in fact, measurable, Lebesgue measurable subset. So here's my epsilon again. Here's a choice for the A-set. The A-set now, I choose like this. It will be the union finite union up to this particularly chosen index of a dash n elements. Because the finite union, this is the element of my minimal enveloping ring. And now I claim the following set relation. The symmetric set difference of my a and this specifically crafted a dash will be a subset, look at what, of union of all symmetric differences, complete union, countable union, union of a dash ends, but not all of them, but the tail of this one, and that's where it stops. Again, I'll leave it for you to check this relation. You have to take an element from the left hand side and see that under all possibilities it will end up in the right hand side, one way or another. But if I have such a relation, and remember I can use the semi additivity for the external measure, I can now estimate the External measure of this symmetric difference, like this, it will be the sum of the individual external measures of this sequence, and that actually will be just geometric series, and this will be the tail, the tail here. Now we know this is this complete sum, of this tail less than epsilon. We know that this, we know that this. Uh, less than this one, so all together it is less than 2 epsilon, this individually less than 2 to the power n, so if you add up this geometric series there will be just 1 epsilon, now the epsilon comes from here, all together 2 epsilon, and look what happened, for this set I presented it's, it wasn't an easy construction, it wasn't an easy presentation, but I explicitly constructed this set from the minimal enveloping ring. For any epsilon, I give you the recipe how, how to construct this, such that the symmetric difference is controlled by, the same, by this epsilon. This is the definition of the Bayes measurability. That's why, in fact, this f is sigma algebra.